strike. Big cut for the player who leads the entire nation in home runs. 18 bombs, 60 RBIs, leads the league in both categories, obviously. The 1 pitch is up and away for a ball. Gasco second in the nation in RBIs, 10th in the nation in triples, and second in the nation in slugging percentage. One ball, one strike, the count to Gasco. Pitch by Fraser is up and away, ball two. Trying trailed at four to nothing before Carly Thurl scored. Not a fantastic play by her, tagging from second base on a throw to third. It was a bit errant. She got up and raced toward home to score the only run of the day for the Blue. Swinging a foul ball lifted directly behind home plate to square the count at 2-2. In case you're looking for trying baseball action there in the MIAA tournament today, you can uh, tune in to the internet, 88xradio.com, or the Triumph Thunder Athletics page, and Tyler Benner will have the pregame show for that game against Calvin at 1245. Swing and a miss on a changeup, and Gasco is down on strikes. Third punch out of the day for Sammy Frazier, and that is a rare changeup that she has thrown today. Frazier, the freshman of the year and the conference pitcher of the year, came in with a 0.74 ERA. Now it's Harris. She hacks at the first pitch and fouls it off. Right side, it's out of play. Frazier, a player who came in as a hitter, leading the entire state last year in home runs. Her role increased as conference play commenced. And she is now the number one pitcher on this team. Pop up right side foul territory caught by the catcher, Natalie Morehouse, for out number two. Popped it about 10 feet foul past the home plate side as she reached out and made a basket catch. Two away in the fourth inning, and Sammy Frazier trying to retire the Thunder in order for the second time today. And standing in her way is right fielder Leah Hall. Grounded out to Ogden her first time, 0 for 1. First pitch outside, ball 1. 4-1 Ravens, fourth inning with two out. Outfield playing about as deep as you physically can in this facility with the top scoring team in the nation. Grounder right back to the circle. Caught by Fraser, a high throw and she's safe. Leah Hall breaks towards second base and she's in safely. That's as routine of a throw as you'll ever make on a one-hop comebacker to Sammy Fraser. She had all the time in the world to throw to first base, and she just threw it high, about two feet over the head of Yardley Colette, and it allows Leah Hall to advance to second base. Trine has been given a big-time opportunity here in the fourth inning. We'll see if the conference player of the year, Sarah Below, can take advantage of it. Runner at second, two down, but the Thunder trailing this game 4-1. Frazier sights his sign with the pitch. is down the heart of the play called strike. Float with a gold ribbon in the back of her hair with her long brown hair flowing out of the back of the helmet. Climbs in from the right side with her pants hiked up. Takes it outside the ball to square things at 1-1. One, one. Float fifth in the nation in home runs and 14th in the nation in RBIs. 4-1 Ravens runner second, two down. 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss. Big looping swing by Below. She's down a ball, two strikes. Sarah hits 5-21 with runners in scoring position this year. Frazier grabs the sign, the 1-2 pitch. A changeup has popped up right side. Foul territory racing over to the second baseman, Wiestefeld, and she makes a sliding catch with her back to the infield on the grass and foul grounds to end the inning. Fantastic play by the MVP, Amy Wiestefeld, to retire below. No runs for the Thunder. We head to the fifth. It's Anderson four and the Thunder one. This is Prime Thunder Softball on 88X. Jetpacks, potato chips, 88xradio.com, wearing underwear right out of the dryer, the core of a cinnamon roll, 88xradio.com, eating a taco without anything falling out, eating a taco, 88xradio.com. Real the preceding list of awesome things has been made possible thanks to 88xradio.com, more than just trying sports. The 1979 film Avenging Disco Godfather. I'm Jorge Salazar. Each day, Earth Sky brings you the ideas, strategies, and research results of the world's top scientists. You can hear Earth Sky weekdays at noon 
here on Trine University Radio, WEAX, and online at 88xradio.com. Earth Sky is a clear voice for science. Aaron Coyle back to be live from Trine University is the top half of the fifth inning. The Thunder Trail, the Anderson Ravens 4-1. Andy Gasco started, lasted two innings. She has been replaced in the circle by Bree Fuller. She's been fantastic in her two innings of work. Has allowed just one base runner as she hit Yarley Colette with a pitch in her first at-bat and has subsequently retired six in a row, including three strikeouts. She gets the conference MVP, Wiestefeld, followed by Ogden and Colette, two, three, and four in the Anderson order here in the fifth inning. Two in the first, two in the second for Anderson and try and score their lone run in the home half of the third inning. Wiestefeld, also the point guard on the basketball team for Anderson, has an RBI base hit and has also walked and has scored a run. One for one for Wiestefeld, who came in hitting 482, which is 28th in the entire nation and tops in the entire league. Coming off a 379 campaign last year and hit 408 as a sophomore. Sun showering down in bright rays here across Trine University. First pitch of the fifth is taken just outside the ball. Rachel Harris halfway down the third base line with Lauren Harris about even in the bag and Amy Newell playing tight at second base. 1-0 pitch is taken outside for a ball to run the count to 2-0. Squared around the bunt. Wiestefeld standing close to the plate, a speedy player from the left side of the box. Fuller needs a strike on the 2-0 pitch, and she gets it on the outside edge. Breaking ball from Fuller, some late spin, just did catch the, catch the outer black. 4-1 Ravens fifth inning. Fuller's 2-1 pitch is bunted at and empty. She comes on a pitch down low to square the count at 2-2. Wiestefeld made that nice sliding catch to end the bottom half of the fourth inning on the foul ball. Fuller's 2-2 pitch, swinging a foul ball straight back. Eight teams in this region, folks. A couple Indiana teams hooking up in the first game. Next game has an Ohio team in Mount Union along with an Illinois team in Aurora. Two balls, two strikes. Lead off hitter. Fifth inning with the Thunder down 4-1. Swinging a ground ball hit to shortstop. Fielded by Daniels and a quick throw to first base for the out. Seven in a row sent down for the pitcher Bree Fuller. Fun away, here's Katie Ogden who bounced out on a sacrifice her first time. And her next time flew out to center field to Carly Searles. She's 0 for 1. Hogged in the senior 322 hitter. First pitch, swinging a high foul ball left side. It carries out a play over the press box, and she's down a strike. 4 1 Ravens, top half of the fifth inning, game number one. Trying the number one seed. Trailed it at 1.4 nothing. Fuller's 0-1 pitch, a changeup, down and away ball. Ogden, first team all-conference this year, and second team all-conference as a sophomore. Has seven career home runs. Pitch, swing, and a miss on a high fastball. Count drops to a ball, two strikes. Sunny and warm day. The Thunder trail at 4-1, the fifth inning, the opening round. 1-2 pitch, change up, fly ball, shallow center field. Running in is Searles to make the catch for the out. Carly tracks it down in shallow center field. And Bree Fuller looking for her second consecutive 1-2-3 inning. She retired eight batters in a row. She gets Yardley Colette, who has an RBI single, and she's been hit by a pitch. She's the only batter who Bree Fuller has faced who she has not retired. Colette, the sophomore, a very strong player, pops it up, foul grounds right side. Digging Harris makes a diving catch on the slide about two-thirds of the way down the first baseline in foul territory. Fantastic hustle play by the senior Lauren Harris. 
Anderson down in order for the second consecutive time, and Fuller's retired nine in a row. We head to the bottom of the fifth. It's Anderson four, the Thunder one. This is Tri Thunder Softball on 88X. Kids need some sort of education after high school if they hope to be financially secure. Older students can plan right now to visit college campuses this summer. Visits should include meeting with an admissions representative and exploring financial aid options. And speaking of financial aid, students also can search for scholarships at websites such as fastweb.com, scholarship.com, and capex.com. Finally, this also is a good time for college-bound students to get ready for next fall's SAT or ACT exams. Students can enroll in a prep course or take free practice tests online at collegeboard.org or act.org. Aaron Coyle back with you live from Trine University. It's the home half of the fifth inning of the first round of the 2013 NCAA tournament. And the Thunder trail at 4-1. They trailed at 4 to nothing at one point. Scored a run on a fantastic hustle play by Carly Sturles in the third inning. And now they send up Harris along with Daniels and Searles, 8-9-1 in the Trine Thunder order here in the fifth inning against the freshman Sammy Frazier. Harris popped out to Nicole Frazier first time, 0-1. for 1. First pitch at the bell to call the strike. Don Dankles it down at third base, pacing back and forth, swaying in his stance as she takes another strike. And she's down nothing and two. Rachel, the D2 transfer, a 343 hitter with 13 home runs, which is eighth in the nation. Catcher sets up on the outside. It's way outside the ball. Double elimination tournament, folks, but you never want to drop that first game. It is a long road to hoe after that point. Laser shot foul right side off the fence near the Anderson dugout, and the count remains at the ball two strikes. Loser has to drop to that loser's bracket, then they have to really fight out of it. Play tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. If they win that, they have to play Saturday twice, and then advance on to Sunday and have three more wins after that point. Swing a fly ball into right near the line, tracking it down is Lisas for the out, and Harris retired to become the first out here in the fifth inning. One away, here's Haley Daniels, who lined hard to Nicole Frazier her first time, 0 for 1. Daniels came into this tournament 0 for her last eight after struggling a bit in the MIAA tournament at the plate. First pitch, ground ball hit to the shortstop. Frazier fields and throws, and quickly two away here in the fifth inning. One pitch, one out for Haley Daniels. And it's the top of the order in the speedy Carly Searles. 4-1 Ravens in the home half of the fifth inning with two out. Searles a base hit and a run score, and she's also struck out. Frazier has not walked a hitter yet today, and a swing and a miss to Carly Searles. And you really have to admire the composure today by this freshman pitcher. Never pitched in the NCAA tournament before. Facing the top offense in the entire nation. And she has acquitted herself very nicely to postseason play as she misses its 1-1. Came in with a 0.74 ERA, which is tops in the entire league. Swing, pop-up, foul, third base side. Three players giving chase, still running, and it's out of play. Frazier, Ogden, and Ream, a short third and a left field respectively, converged on that ball near the Trine Thunder bullpen. Carly drops down to the ball, two strikes. Two gone, fifth inning. The Thunder are down, folks, 4-1. Corners pulled in. The 1-2 pitch, swinging a foul ball straight back. Searles, the sister of Andy Gasco, probably could have run track at Michigan State had she wanted to. Is that big of a talent. The two-sport all-conference player for the Thunder. His time is called, and she steps out. Searles from Levering, Michigan. He, she, and Gasco from Petoskey High School. Settles back into the box, lifts the bat off her shoulder. The one-two pitch, a swing and a miss, and a strikeout, and a one-two-three fifth inning for the freshman Sammy Frazier. After five complete at Trine University, Anderson four, 
and the Thunder won. This is Tri Thunder Softball on 88X. Thunder Athletics on WEAX are made possible thanks to a donation from Home Lumber of New Haven. Home Lumber offers a full line of building materials, including Anderson windows and patio doors, Thermatrue entry doors, Safeway garage doors, and Cardell cabinets. Phone 260-493-4436 or see homelumberinc.com. Home Lumber of New Haven is proud to be a Thunder Varsity Club member and supports Trine University Athletics on WEAX. Right now, nearly 30% of U.S. students aren't finishing high school. In many places, it's even higher than that. And fixing it is a responsibility that we all share. This is President Obama, and I urge everyone to take responsibility for encouraging the high school students in your communities, to support them, challenge them, and do whatever it takes to help them make it through. Do your part by going to BoostUp.org and giving a student the boost that's needed to make it to graduation. A message from the U.S. Army and the Ad Council. Listening to Trine University Athletics on WEAX Angola. Eric Coyle back with you live from Trine University. It's the top half of the sixth inning, and time wearing a bit thin for the number one seed. They trail it four to one against the Anderson Ravens. Andy Gasco started, lasted two innings, threw several illegal pitches. Normally, when you throw an illegal pitch, it's because you don't have the foot on the rubber. When you come through the windup, you have to keep a foot down at all times. If you bring the foot off the ground, it can create more leverage for the pitcher, and that's usually what they call the illegal pitch on. Don't have clarification until I talk to the umpire if I happen to after the game. But it threw Gasco off. It threw the rhythm of the team off, and it also scored two runs directly on illegal pitches. Gasco lasted two innings. Bree Fuller's been fantastic. She hit the first batter she faced and has subsequently retired the last nine hitters. Reem starts things off, bunts at it, comes up empty, and she's down a strike. Five, six, and seven with Reem, followed by Hess and Natalie Morehouse here in the sixth inning. 4-1 Ravens. Corners drawn in. Not much wind, if any, here this morning. The 0-1 pitch, swing, fly ball off the end of the bat, center field. Searles broke back, now breaks in a couple steps and makes the play for the out. Ten in a row for Bree Fuller. Couldn't have asked anything more from her after coming in in very difficult times in the third inning, taking over for the H. Gasco. Fuller has done all she could to hold the team tight, and the Thunder still trailing by three runs. Now it's Hess, a bounce out and a pop out. First pitch fastball called strike in the outside corner. Lisa, graduate student for Anderson, tore her ACL last year, had a year of eligibility left. Became a graduate student, now is playing softball in the NCAA tournament. And it's the fourth time in a row the Ravens have reached it. Ball outside, it's 1-1. And when you look at a normal number eight seed, they normally do not have the experience this Anderson Raven team does. Made it to the NCAA tournament for the third consecutive year. Pitch is just down low for a ball. They won two games last year in the tournament. They won one game two years ago. And they have their top nine hitters back from that team last year. So this is not a team who comes in as an eighth seed normally with not much experience. Swinging a high fly ball, deep left field, backing Clark, looking up at the fence, and it's against the base of the fence. Rounding first and heading into second base is Hess with a stand-up double. Just missed a home run. Would have been her 10th career shot to left field. It's her ninth double of the year. And Anderson has a runner in scoring position with one out. And the Thunder cannot afford to give up any more. They trail it 4-1 to one here in the sixth inning. Now it's Morehouse, who was the conference player of the year last year with 10 home runs and 46 RBIs a year ago. The converted shortstop is now a catcher. She takes it up and away a ball. That's the first hit of the day allowed by Bree Fuller. Morehouse this year has had to concentrate on her catching duties. Her average has dipped to 245, has two home runs, has driven in 19. Pit swing, hard ground ball caught by Harris, looks the runner back, throws to first base for the out. Nice play and a high throw by Lauren Harris at first base as Lee Hess stays at second base. Two away in the top half of the sixth inning. Here's Nicole Frazier, the former high school teammate of Leah Hall. 
with the Thunder trailing at 4-1 as they run a pinch runner out to second base to run for Hess, who had that ACL injury a year ago. Caitlin Arnold, the freshman from Kokomo, graduated from Taylor High School, a second baseman and third baseman for this team, utility middle infielder. Sometimes plays on the corner as well. He is taking over to run out at second base. Arnold running for lease. Runner at second base, two down in the top half of the sixth inning, and the number eight seeded Anderson Ravens lead the Thunder 4-1. Right-handed hitter at the plate. Frazier making her 17th start of the year and is hitting 216 at the beginning of the day. Wide open stance, rocking in it with her left foot near the outside of the batter's box. The first pitch, swing and a miss on a high fastball, and she's down to strike. It's really been a silent trying crowd, kind of strange today. Haven't had a lot to cheer for as they trail at 4 1. Fuller's 0 1 pitch. Settles on the outside corner for a called strike, and she's down nothing and two. Bream flew out. Hess had a double. Morehouse bounced out to Harris at third base. Arnold running at second base for Hess. Fuller a pitch away from getting out of the inning, brings the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a pop-up off the end of the bat. Fuller calling, and on the circle, she makes the catch. And that's the inning. They strand a runner at second base. We head to the bottom of the sixth. The Thunder trailed this game 4-1. This is Try Thunder Softball on 88X. It's simple. Education equals success. And you want an edge. At the Trine Virtual Campus, your edge is our business. TVC brings Trine University's exceptional tradition and its highly regarded graduate and undergraduate programs right to you online, anytime, anywhere in the world. That's the flexibility you need, plus the quality you demand. So get your edge. Visit trine.edu backslash virtual campus. While cutting molding with a 12-inch dual compound miter saw, while holding a newborn baby in your arms, when face-to-face -face with a congregation of alligators, with the ball in your hands and the entire freaking season on the line. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So your why parents. would you do it there while driving? On what NASCAR driver Casey fails, Kane here, in the asking you to please stop the text. And together, we can stop the wrecks. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Get the message at stoptextstoprex.org. <laughs> Aaron Coyle back with you live from Trine University. It's the home half of the sixth inning of the first round of the NCAA tournament. Anderson four and the Thunder one. Trine has had just two base hits against the freshman Sammy Fraser. She has struck out four and has not walked a hitter today. Caitlin Clark has one of those two hits as she leads things off, followed by Newell and Gasco, two, three, and four in the Trine Thunder order. And the Tennessee native takes it on the outside edge, a called strike. Corners drawn in, Ogden at third, and Colette at first base. The 0-1 pitch is right down the heart of the plate, a called strike. And at least Hess, who has pinch run for, in the last inning, has returned into the game and is playing out in right. 0-2 pitch, just barely misses outside the ball. Clark, a former infielder in high school has extended her hitting streak to 10 games. Is 40th in the nation in RBIs with 44. Up and away a ball to square things at 2-2. Trying the top hitting team in the nation has been limited to just two hits. They trail it 4-1 in the sixth inning against the freshman hurler, Sammy Frazier. 2-2 pitch, swing and a foul ball straight back and had a big cut. Anderson has had just one error that came on a routine throwing error by the pitcher Frazier in the fourth inning, but then she bounced back to pop up the MVP of the entire conference, Sarah Below, to the second baseman. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and a strikeout in the outside corner. Five punch outs for the freshman Frazier. And now it's second baseman Amy Newell. Newell started as the DP. She switched to second base after the Thunder replaced pitchers in the third inning. Takes it up and away, ball one. University of Toledo transfer. She was a pitcher there last year. Will be a pitcher for the Thunder here next year. 1-0 pitch, inside corner, called strike. 
Anderson two in the first, two in the second. Try and score to run in the third on a hustle play by Carly Searles. And that's been it. 1-1 one, one pitch is down the heart of the plate. Another strike. Frazier has not been deterred in the slightest bit today, folks, by this Triumph Thunder offense. The freshman has come in confident and calm the entire day. Brings a 1-2 pitch. is up and away a ball. But try can heat up, as you well know. They still have five outs to work with. Two balls, two strikes. The count to Newell. Lifts the bat off her shoulder. Waits on the 2-2 pitch. A line drive right field. Chasing over near the line is Lease to make the catch for route number two. Six in a row sent down for the freshman Frazier. And now it's the top home run hitter in the entire nation. And Andy Gasco has been hit by a pitch and has struck out. 4-1, Raven sixth inning with two away. Frazier sights his side, brings the pitch. It's up and away, ball one. Gasco, 41 career home runs, which is tops in the entire program history and also leads them in RBIs with 144 in her career. 1-0 pitch is popped up. Pitching circle calling is the pitcher. Frazier makes the catch and a 1-2-3 sixth inning as the freshman has retired seven in a row. We head to the seventh. It's Anderson four and the Thunder one. This is Tri Thunder Softball on 88X. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In biology, I learned that I'm fat, I'm stupid. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. The only thing I didn't learn in school today is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Thunder Athletics on 88X are made possible thanks to a donation from Tasty Pizza of Angola. Located on 200 North, Tasty Pizza offers specialty pizzas, oven-baked subs, calzones, and more for pickup or delivery. Phone 260-833-8500 or visit tastypizzaangola.com. Tasty Pizza is proud to be a Thunder Varsity Club member and supports Trine University Athletics on 88X. Aaron Coyle back with you live from Trine University. We venture into the top half of the seventh inning in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The Anderson Ravens lead the Thunder 4-1. Gasco started, lasted two innings. Bree Fuller has been fantastic replacing her, allowing just one base hit in four innings. And that was a one-out double to Lee Hess in the sixth inning. Nine, one, and two with Steele, followed by Lee and the MVP of the conference, Wiestefeld, here in the seventh inning. Sun has made several appearances. is now a bit hazy here in Angola as... We approach the noon hour, about 25 minutes away. Trying down 4-1, seventh inning. Defense the same with Harris, Daniels, Newell, and Harris. Third to first, below catching. Clark, Searles, and Leah Hall from left to right in the outfield. Lefty climbs in, Fuller sights his side, bunts at third base side, a great bunt. Picking it up and an infield hit with no throw. Bunt base hit by Samantha Steele, her second hit of the day. And Anderson is looking for insurance with the runner at first. Steele has 10 stolen bases, which is second on the team. Laid that ball down about 10 feet fair right in front of home plate to the left side of the infield. And Bree Fuller very wisely held on to that ball. Now it's Lee who has two hits and two runs scored and a strikeout. Bunts it straight into the air, caught by Harris, and nobody was covering first base. So they can't double the runner off as she runs back. They had the shift on as Lauren Harris was charging toward the bunting batter, and the second base when Amy Newell had not shifted over yet to cover first base. But the ball caught in the air by Rachel Harris at third base for the out. And now it's the conference MVP in Wiestefeld, who is one for two with an RBI base hit in the second inning. 4-1 Ravens in the seventh inning. She bunts it third base side, rolling, fair ball, and another bunt base hit. Two bunt hits in the seventh inning for the Ravens as they are fundamentally doing everything right. 20 feet down the third base line, Harris tried to 
gesture that ball foul, but it stayed about six inches into fair territory. Two on, one out, seventh inning. The Thunder already trailing at 4-1. And here's Katie Ogden, who is 0-2 with the sacrifice bunt. And she has flown out to Carly Searles twice. Free Fuller sights his side, brings the pitch to the waiting righty. Swing and a miss. Ogden, seven career home runs, a 322 hitter, and it came in hitting 500 in her last six games. Sights is signed, the 0-1 pitch. The fastball just misses outside a ball. First and second, one out, seventh inning. Anderson, four, and the Thunder, one. Fuller steps off, steps right back up. Sign laid down by below. The 1-1 pitch is taken down and away, ball two. Katie Ogden from Beach Grove graduated from high school there. Hit 337 a year ago and 347 as a sophomore. Two on pitch, lifted foul behind home plate to square the count at 2 2. Anderson looking for insurance. The Thunder trying to thwart that charge here in the seventh inning as they trail at 4 1 with one out runners at first and second. Outfield playing deep and straight away. 2-2 to Ogden is up high and outside for a ball and a very nice job to lay off that high pitch. Fills the count out as 3-2. Big pitch coming, folks, for Bree Fuller. Trying the favorite in this region, the host and the number one team on the ropes here in the first game. Payoff pitch, swinging a foul ball back. Everybody already talking about the World Series being played in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. But this is a tournament, guys. Anything can happen. And even if Trine loses this game, anything can happen. 3-2 pitch coming. Swinging a foul ball right side. It carries out a play with Hall giving chase. But it's into the visiting bullpen. And the count remains at 3-2. In case you're looking forward to the home half of the seventh inning, the Thunder will have 5-6-7 and seven with Lauren Harris, Leah Hall, and Sarah Belote. Anderson this year when leading after six innings, they are 18 and 0. The Thunder are 1 and 3 when they trail after six. 3 2 pitch, swing, pop up behind the second base bag. It drops for a base hit. Fielding it as Searles throws to third base and safe. Searles charged that ball. The runner at second base, Samantha Steele, had to wait to see if the ball would be caught in center field. Hit by a pitch and has popped out on a nice sliding play by Lauren Harris. Colette, big time danger, folks, with 11 career home runs in two years. First pitch, line drive, base hit, left field. One run comes across to score, and it's a 5 1 game in favor of the Ravens. Bases remain loaded on the second RBI hit of the day by Yardley Colette. Samantha Steele crosses. Wiestefeld to third, Ogden to second base, Colette hangs out at first. And remember, Anderson has had two bunt base hits here in the seventh inning. A blue pit into center field and then the shot by Yardley Colette into left. Here's Megan Ream, 0 for 3 with a punch out. Still just one out in the seventh inning, the base is loaded. First pitch hits the outside corner called strike. Trine has three losses this year, folks, and they have all come by one run. But a 5-1 lead for Anderson here in the first round of the tournament. And in major danger, the base is loaded. The 0-1 pitch has popped up. Foul territory, below giving chase, and it's out of play. Bounced into the stands. So balls, two strikes to count. Megan Ream wearing double, number double zero across her back. Orange hair ribbon, orange and black, the colors for the Anderson Ravens. 
They faced the Thunder in the regular season last year. 0-2 so pitch, swing, fly ball off the end of the bat, center field, charging in as Searles makes the catch, runner tag, the throw to home, Bloat has it, and she's out. Carly Searles guns her out from center field, Bloat nails her at the plate, but the Ravens get a run, and we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning, the number one seed in big time trouble, folks, as they trail this game 5-1. This is Tri Thunder Softball on 88X. Hi, this is Rob Reinhardt, your host for Acoustic Cafe. Next time on the show, new music from Junip, also Frank Turner, plus Billy Bragg and Paula Cole, both then and now. And joining us in the studio, a true rock legend who is back with new rock music, Rod Stewart. All of that and more next time on Acoustic Cafe. Listen for Acoustic Cafe every Sunday morning starting at 9 right here on Trine University Radio and 88xradio.com. Need apparel for your favorite Trine sports team? Visit T-Gear and cover everyone in your family from grandma to the kids in authentic Thunder wear. T-Gear is your source for Trine University apparel, including sweatshirts, jackets, polos, hats, t-shirts, and more. Check out T-Gear online at trine.edu slash T-Gear or visit them at their storefront location at 705 West Maumee Street in Angola. Phone 260-243-4415. T-Gear, your source for Thunder apparel. AC back with you live from Trine University. It's the home half of the seventh inning of the first round of the NCAA tournament. And the Trine Thunder trailed this game 5-1. Lauren Harris, Leah Hall, Sarah Below, and many more they hope facing off against the freshman Sammy Frazier, who has thrown a fantastic game, allowing just two base hits and one run. Has not walked a soul today and has struck out five. Lauren Harris has popped out and flown out to the left fielder, Megan Ream. A hard line drive, and she's 0 for 2. Frazier's first pitch of the inning is on the outside corner, a called strike. And for the entire day, she's been consistent getting that first pitch over. Trying down 5-1 with three outs to work with. Nods her head to the catcher, Moore out, brings the 0-1 pitch. She pops it up, infield. Wiestefeld, the MVP, makes the catch, one away. Just to the right of the pitching circle. The second baseman tucks it away. Harris back to the dugout. Leah Hall to home plate. 0 for 2 with a bounce out and reached on a throwing ear by the pitcher. 5-1 Ravens, seventh inning. They are 18-0 when leading after six innings, and the Thunder are 1-3 when trailing after six. Corners drawn in. The pitch to the sophomore. Swing, line, drive, foul down the right field line. She's down a strike. You can take all the regular season numbers right now and you can put them in your pocket, folks, because they don't mean a thing. After the Thunder led the entire nation in scoring, they've had just two hits today and they trail at 5-1. Hall steps out, collects herself. The sophomore hitting a 278 has started each and every game this year. The 0-1 pitch is just down low a ball. Anderson, two in the first, two in the second. Several illegal pitches called, and two of them scored runs. Try and score their run in the third inning, and Anderson added insurance in the top half of the seventh. 1-1 one, one pitch, up and away, ball two. Try and came in with a 374 team batting average, but they have had two hits today. Skies have become more overcast toward the noon hour. 2-1 pitch is just up high and outside a ball. And a couple of groans from uh, the Anderson contingent. Leah Hall steps out, steps back up. The four-year starter in high school waits. 3-1 pitch from the freshman is at the letters a called strike. Anderson 5, the Thunder 1, home half of the seventh inning with one down. The winner plays tomorrow at 2, and the loser has to come back here and play at 10 a.m. Frazier unleashes the payoff pitch. He pops it foul off the bat handle right side. It carries out a play. Hall steps out, collects herself. Climbs back into the right side of the batter's box. 
3-2 pitch from the freshman. Swing, line drive, right field, base hit. Past the diving second baseman, Wiestefeld. And the Thunder have a base runner here in the seventh inning. Just the third hit of the day for the Thunder Blue. But now it's the conference MVP and the catcher, Sarah Belote. He has struck out, has popped out 0 for 2. And a pinch runner summoned into the game. It's Riley Larkin running at first base for the Thunder. Larkin hails from Plainfield, graduated from Avon High School, where she played for the Orioles. The former fantastic high school player who played basketball there as well. Hit 448 as a junior, and her team made it all the way to the state finals in 2011. 5-1 Ravens, one out, seventh inning. Larkin standing at first, and Sarah Belote at the plate. First pitch, swing and a miss. Sarah Belote from Bronson, Michigan, waits. Frazier, though, on pitch is just inside for a ball to run the count square, 1-1. One, one. Outfield almost literally playing against the back of the fence in all the positions. 1-1 one, one pitch up high for a ball. Sarah, fantastic batting eye. She's the all-time leader in career walks in trying university history. 5-1 Ravens, seventh inning with one down to runner at first. Frazier lets loose the 2-1 pitch. It's in there for a called strike. Game two. Teams are all standing aside with Mount Union on the right and Aurora University on the left. 2-2 pitch, swinging a foul ball. Just got a piece of it at the plate. It squirmed out of the glove of the catcher Morehouse and rolled near the on-deck circle on the right side of the box. Two balls, two strikes, the count to below. 5-1 Ravens, seventh inning. First game of the tournament. Belote takes some practice swings, comes set, wearing number 12 across her back. Frazier's 2-2 pitch, swing, and a huge rip, and she fouled it straight back. Never can accuse Sarah Belote of being shortchanged at the plate. Gets those healthy swings in. Conference MVP, where she hit over 500 this year, had nine home runs in conference play and 34 RBIs. 2-2 pitch is a changeup taken down and away, ball three. Trying down 5-1, looking for a bit of an uprising here in the inning. 3-2 pitch coming, swing, pop up. Left side of the infield. Katie Ogden calls the third baseman, and she drops it. But they throw to second base for the force out. Riley Larkin was waiting at first base, thinking the ball would be caught. Ogden dropped it, picked it up, and tossed it to second base to force out Larkin. And the Thunder are down to their final out. All Trine does is... Swap base runners. They take Larkin down, and now Sarah Belote reaches on the fielder's choice as Tony Holloway comes to the pitching circle, and he'll collect his entire infield to try to collect everybody and not make a mistake. With the Thunder trailing at 5-1 in the seventh inning and a runner at first base, and Rachel Harris at the plate, who was 0-2 with a pop-out and a fly-out. Number eight seeded Anderson Ravens. They have made it to the NCAA tournament each of the last three years. They have a lot of experience for a number eight seed. And it is certainly shown here this morning. 5-1 Ravens, one out to go with the runner at first base and two down. Seventh inning. Now it's Harris, the D2 transfer. First pitch, a pitch out. They throw to first base and safe. They had a play on that time. The second baseman sneaked behind the runner, Sarah Below. They thought maybe they could catch her napping at first base, but it didn't work. One ball, no strikes to count. Harris bends in. The 1-0 pitch is taken just off the plate outside. Ball two. Five one Raven seventh inning. Frazier the freshman. 2-0 pitch is taken down the heart of the plate. A called strike. Frazier grabs his sign, the two on to Harris, swinging a line drive foul near the dugout right side. 
as the count falls to 2-2 two, two, and the Thunder down to their final strike. Trime won three in a row last year as the number one seed. Dropped the last two against Ohio Northern. But trailing 5-1 the seventh inning with a 2-2 two, two count and two out and a runner at first. Frazier's 2-2 two, two pitch is up and away, ball three. Trying needing base runners because you know that the power prowess that they have, if they can get enough base runners on, they have a chance. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss, a strikeout, and that does it. The number eight seed Anderson Ravens have absolutely shocked the Thunder in the early morning game of the first round, defeating Trine 5-1 behind the fantastic freshman pitcher by the pitcher of the year in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, Sammy Frazier. She strikes out six and holds the top offense in the entire nation to just three base hits. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this. Again, your final score in game number one. It's Anderson 5 and the Thunder 1. This is Triumph Thunder Softball on 88X. Multiple sclerosis destroys connection. So it's only fitting that connection would be its greatest enemy because connection takes away MS's ability to isolate. And as more connections form, we end up with more knowledge, more resources, more understanding, more ideas, and more hope. And then, the connections we make become more powerful than the connections MS destroys. 